So may I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we begin our sermon today, I want just to take you back to some of the words of the college. And those words are, Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts, and that is a real key phrase, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the spirit of love and joy and peace. So we pray that God would open our hearts to hear his word. On the 16th of July, 1969, three American astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins and Buzz Aldrin, were strapped into their capsule at the head of a mighty Saturn rocket. And they were blasted into space at the beginning of their eight day mission to land the first human beings on the surface of the moon. This historic event took place as the culmination of years of research, development and planning. They were engaged in something no other human being had done before. And yet, and yet, they were just part of a huge team of scientists and engineers that worked together to achieve their goal. Nevertheless, each of the astronauts had to make a huge act of faith that this whole operation would work out. Indeed, their lives depended upon it. Today in the Gospel, we find Peter being invited by Jesus to do something no other human being had done before or after, to walk on the waters of a stormy lake. Here, there was no lengthy preparation, no team of collaborators, just Jesus and a crew of frightened disciples. Nevertheless, Peter had to put his faith in Jesus. He had heard the wonderful teaching of Jesus. He had witnessed the many miracles of healing and casting out of demons. Recently, he'd just witnessed how Jesus had fed more than 5,000 people with only five loaves and two fish. All well and good. But now, this act of faith was personal. For him, it was a matter of life or death. But so long as he kept his gaze on Jesus, he was safe. Once he looked around and saw the stormy waters and heard the sound of the wind, his faith weakened and he began to sink. Fortunately, Jesus was there to take him by the hand and to bring him safely into the boat, enabling all of the disciples to declare their newfound faith. Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, every day we make little acts of faith in the wonders and with the wonders of modern technology. Now, most of the time, they are not a matter of life or death, but it is a source of wonder how we can talk to each other and see each other in real time, wherever we are in the world, such as now. Sometimes we take that for granted that all the wonders of modern science and medicine will work their miracles for us. And if we're honest, we're a bit aggrieved when something goes wrong. I think we can all say that this crisis has brought us all up short in that respect. We are very impatient for a vaccine. We want the answer before the question has been asked sometimes. However, 
we are so used to what human beings can do through their own, inter own ingenuity that this causes us to lose the sight of the bigger picture of God who holds everything in his hands. The God who is the source of all knowledge and skill. So we need to ask ourselves, where is God in the turbulence of our times? As I say, we can lose sight of the small daily miracles in our life around us. So often we want God to speak up loud and clear so that everyone can see and believe. How many of us have jokingly said to one of our friends, I just wish that God would tell me what to do. Isn't it? <laughs> it's that simple, isn't it? Just tell me, Lord, I'll do it. We've all said that. But in reality, we need to find God in the quietness of our heart and in the quiet moments of our day. And that is beneath the surface of our lives. We find Jesus who invites us to step out of the security of our little boat into the rough waters of everyday life. He invites us to keep our gaze upon him, to listen to him and not to be afraid of the turmoil raging around us. So today let's listen to Jesus who tells us to have courage and not to be afraid, who invites us to come to him through all the storms of our life, keeping our eyes fixed on him and our ears attuned to his voice. We will surely recognise then the enormity of the miracles in our life as we have little acts of love and, serve and service that we are to give and receive with to each other. My words to you this morning are do not be afraid of the voice of God in the stillness. And there are three short points I want to uh, say in regard to being the key to listening to God's voice. First and foremost, we need to ask him, just as Peter did, is that you, Lord? Is what is happening to me right now of you? Is that you? And sometimes we are fearful of even being foolish of saying those words. Oh, it can't be God, it's just a coincidence. So don't be silly, you're thinking things too far. Often God works in the smallness of our life that opens up the larger way. So we need to ask, number one. Number two is to be alert. In our story, Jesus came in the early morning. In some versions, it says the fourth watch, which is between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. Now, I'm not all suggesting that you get up at three o'clock and wait until six o'clock for God to speak to you. Far be it from that. You night owls know that uh, it's difficult to do that. But be alert. And almost like the old radios that we used to have, where you used to adjust the tuning arrow, and you used to listen to all the funny squiggles and squirms until eventually you got the right passage. Then you can listen to what God is saying. And thirdly, believe. Believe like Peter did, with his eyes fixed on Jesus. He asked, he was alert, he tuned in and he believed. So many of us get to this point and then draw back. Ah, oh, well, it's not for me. Well, it's okay for you. You know, you, you've been going to church all, all your life. You, 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 it's, it's in your nature, isn't it? I, I can't believe that God will do that for me. Believe that God wants to be so involved in the intimacy of our lives. 
His love is towards you, not your neighbour, not your friend, in which he is. But in particular, this morning, I want to speak to you as an individual. God is for you. And so often, the thing that stands in front of you, this mountain that you think can't be moved, will be moved if you can do those three small things to ask to be alert and to be to believe and as i was thinking about this mountain or this problem or this illness or whatever that stands in front of you at this moment in time so often i think that the real wisdom here is that you may see something that is in front of you, this mountain, but in reality, the mountain is in your heart, in our heart. And that's the wisdom of God. And once you believe individually that God can move that mountain, irrespective of the physical mountain in front of you, things will happen. Things will move and God will move in your life. I would ask that you keep hold of the collect and pray it every day. Really drill down into it. Open your heart. So this, this week, say before God, in your own quiet time, Lord, I open my heart to you that your grace may flood it, that your grace may fill it, and your Holy Spirit is welcome here. And I think that wonderful things will happen as a result of that. If we dare to ask, if we dare to tune in to God's channel, and if we dare to believe that it's for me that God is speaking, and not for my next door neighbour. Amen. Amen.